I was a swimmer as a kid, uh, which seems fairly obvious given my chosen career path. But um, I used to go to the Otters swimming club and uh, Uncle Ati would come there and he would play table tennis. And after his game of table tennis and after my swimming session, I would often sit with him uh, because he was a friend of my father's and, you know, talk to him. And he would tell me all these stories about, you know, our oceans. And he would, uh, you know, one most significant memory I think I have is the day he was telling me about this dive he did somewhere off Sri Lanka. And he was saying, you know, I was down there and I was like watching this brown skin and it kept going and going and going and going. So now I was sitting there at the edge of my seat thinking, now I'm going to find out what this creature is. And then he says, but I don't know what it was because then we had to come up. And I was like, oh. So, so things like that, you know, like little stories like that that he would tell, they quite, kind of really, uh, I guess, intrigued me and sort of um, made me think, okay, well, what on earth was that? I, maybe I need to go and find out. So that was sort of how I was very inspired and sort of drawn into this magical, mystical world. Um, and he was definitely one of the big influences. So it, most of it was like the general stuff about, you know, the, how amazing the uh, shipwrecks um, in Sri Lanka were and how he had come here to dive those and things like that. But, you know, I was, I was pretty young. I was probably like eight, nine years old. So I think more he was telling the stories and, and since I'm also inherently, you know, very attached to storytelling, uh, I think that's what really drew me in and I'm, I'm better at remembering those things anyways. So I think that just the way he put it out there and his obviously natural knack for telling a story really was able to draw me in. So uh, that is the thing. So I don't even know if some of this was tall tales. You think about this brown skin that keeps going and going and going. Was it real? Was he just trying to excite a child into being drawn into this unknown space? Who knows? And he probably did see fascinating things out there. But some of it may have been sort of um, muddled around with like some excitement, you know, something that would make me think a little bit more because I, I, I know I expressed an excitement for the ocean or just for this magical space and like just wanting to know more and I think it was just his little kind of hook to say, you know what, there is so much out there and we know so little about it and maybe it's your turn to get out there. So I think I was really lucky. So I ran the first long-term research project on blue whales of the northern Indian Ocean. It's called the Sri Lankan Blue Whale Project and I I was actually inspired for this particular project I was inspired by a pilot whale poop uh, and there's a whole story to that but largely it's because I realized these whales were doing something different they were sort of breaking the stereotypes of what we thought blue whales should be doing in warm waters um, and we've just sort of discovered that they are non-migratory they're the only non-migratory population of blue whales in the world uh, they have a different acoustic call, they have different behavioural adaptations and they literally stick around these warm tropical waters of the northern Indian Ocean throughout their lives which is extremely special and so for me I was really drawn into this idea that there was this population that was at the doorstep of Sri Lanka for centuries and we knew next to nothing about them and in my mind if we can overlook or not even realize that there is this giant, I mean these are the largest animals that have ever lived on the planet at you know a few kilometers of our coastline, if we can't pay attention to that and we cannot be intrigued and excited and sort of intellectually stimulated by that then how can we ever care for any of the small things in the ocean? I believe in the power of storytelling and so one of the other things I do a lot of is the education and outreach and media work and um, it, for me, I see how it has changed the mindsets of Sri Lankans. I can see how people are now actually paying attention to the ocean because there are now stories that they, they create, it's, that's creating awareness, that's uh, allowing people to actually realize that this is an incredibly important resource. It's not just a blue tank of water, but if you lift that lid, there is this magical kingdom underneath. What I think is most fascinating was that his love for down there, but also for up there. And I think that's a really unusual duality. Um, and uh, many of us are either fixated in, down in the depths of the ocean or up in space. Whereas he was able to sort of tell the stories of both these spaces and create intrigue and interest and excitement around both these spaces, which is not common. Um, and I think that in itself is very fascinating.